Hey everybody, this is Tim. Welcome back to another episode of Boone County Beekeeper. Uh, today is August the 12th. It's Friday. Uh, it's about 10.30 here in the morning and uh, I've got a lot of things going on today so I thought I'd jump on here real quick and I wanted to do a little talk and a little video about something that's very important to me and it's a very controversial topic today and that is uh, feeding bees. You know, uh, a lot of people, they don't feed their bees. Uh, we have a group out there that's known as the Natural Beekeepers, and uh, I have no problem with what they do and what they're trying to accomplish. You know, uh, but their philosophy is, you know, you shouldn't treat your bees. Uh, you should not uh, feed your bees, but let, rather let them build up, uh, uh, I guess, a tolerance and uh, an immunity to all these things, and pretty much just let them take care of their cells, and you'll have a superior colony. Well. That's good, uh, you know, and I hope that it works for them, but my opinion, and it's strictly just my opinion, I think what they'll end up with at the end of the season is a lot of dead colonies. And uh, they will admit, you know, that they, they have a lot of loss. And, you know, I hate that because uh, these bees are precious, you know. Uh, I don't like to see any colony lost. And if we can do what we can to help them, uh, that's that's what I think we should do now Like I said all this here this this talk today is just strictly my my point of view of the way that I feel about it And I'm not trying to you know to stomp on anybody or say anything uh, Bad about anybody uh, You know everybody has to do their own thing uh, I have seen a lot of uh, youtubers on here uh, I've watched a lot of videos, and uh, you'll see some now that treat and feed, and, and they'll say, you know, I used to, to be treatment-free, and I used to do this and that, but now I do all this. Well, why do they do that? I'll tell you why. They lost a bunch of colonies, that's why. And, you know, I've said it before, you know, uh, bees, uh, they're, they're no different really than having a dog or having a cat. Uh, they're a living being, and uh, I think that we need to uh, to take care of them. We do. We need to do everything that we can to help those animals thrive and survive. Uh, you know, it, it'd be a lot of work to put into a, a a colony to just let it up and die because you're not you're not feeding them or whatever. So that's my point of view on it. Uh, Maybe some people that don't like me saying that, but that's just the way that I feel. Now. Uh, me and my wife was sitting there the other night and was watching TV and this time of the year, you know, there's nothing on really but repeats. So uh, I had about an hour before we went to bed, so I flipped it over on YouTube and uh, I watched a couple videos. I watched Gus Mitchell there. I like watching him. I watched him uh, pull his honey supers off. Uh, that was a good video. Then I flipped over and watched Bruce's bees on his trip there to Utah where he dropped his daughter off at work. and went out and he uh, he got with his buddy there that he met at Hive Life and uh, he went through their colonies there. It was uh, two good videos. I really enjoyed it. Me and my wife was talking and uh, she watched them with me. And we was just talking. I said, you know, I need to get out there in the next day or two and get some feed on these bees because it's been a few days and I know they're probably bone dry by now. And she made the comment. She said, I don't understand why we just give them honey. You know, uh, she said, that's what they like. Well, Immediately, Bob Benny popped in my mind, and uh, I don't know if you've watched the Bob Benny videos about feeding bees, but if you haven't, you need to watch them because he's a Bob Benny's a smart guy, man, and he just uh, he really has a lot of, of knowledge, and especially when it comes to feeding bees. So he explains it really well, and I'm not going to get into all that, but he uh, he really explains it well, but. I was quick to tell her uh, from what Bob Penny said, uh, you know, yeah, they like honey, but honey is not their favorite food. You know, really their favorite food is good fresh nectar. That's what it is. Uh, the nectar is what they go out and they, they gather from the flowers. They bring it back to the colony and that's what they make the honey out of. Now, you can have a good nectar flow, well, they're not going to touch anything else because they like that nectar. That's what they like, and it's, it's good for them. So I was quick to tell her that, and uh, I guess she thought I was crazy. But uh, And another thing, you wouldn't want to feed them honey unless, if the only time you feed them honey is if you knew for sure that it came from your colony. 
definitely don't feed them anything that come from somebody else because you could be bringing in disease or or anything like that you know behind me i have this one hive left and that's that's one reason i burnt that other hive because i didn't really know what they got into and i didn't want to risk any chance of them coming over and robbing you know what they had stored and then maybe carrying it over and killing this colony behind me as well so uh feeding bees you know uh, it's very important and, and if you watch them videos i was telling you bob benny he'll tell you that uh there's a lot of things a lot of questions out there you know what do we feed our bees uh well a lot of study has been done and uh, to be honest with you uh, there's a lot of things out there you know you have sucrose which is table sugar you have uh fructose uh, which is corn syrup and then you have dextrose now really a combination of the three uh, is really what pro sweet is uh, pro sweet is thick uh, it's expensive as i stated in an earlier video but uh, it is a thick syrup that you put on your bees and it is a combination of sucrose fructose and dextrose that's basically what pro sweet is in the Hillbilly Earl on one of his videos, he has a really good video on there how to make your own pro suite at home. But if you listen to Bob Benny, he makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, the best thing really to feed your bees is sucrose. And what sucrose is, is nothing else but just regular old white table sugar. Uh, that's what it is. And uh, Bob Benny will tell you, you know, the, uh, the, the right uh, mixture to feed those bees. He said he likes to do one to one. That would be, you know, one pound of sugar to one pound of water. Uh, that's basically what I do, or a little less than that. I like to be just a little less, and he talks about that as well. Um, I tell you, when you feed them a little less than that, uh, they really will build a lot of comb. Uh, it really spurs them up to build comb. Uh, they'll they'll uh, really lay some brood. It really gets them fired up, especially this time of year. You know, like I said, we're in a dearth. We have nothing coming in right now. So it's important to, to get some feed on there. They're just going to sit and uh, not do anything. So right now is a very important time for these bees. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get built up for winter. I'm trying to put as much weight on them as I can. And uh, Bob Benny, he'll go into uh, to explaining, you know, why you want to do that at a one-to-one -one or a little less than one-to-one. -one. And he'll tell you, you know, that it gives off actually a, a form of hydrogen peroxide, which is an antiseptic we know, and that is good for the bees as well. So it's very important. Now, uh, where I'm actually got my bee yard now where i have it now uh, i have something there that i don't have here at the house and that is uh, japanese knotweed uh, i've not been around it much as far as bees but uh, they say they will make honey off of it well it it's uh, getting ready to bloom uh, probably within the next within the next week uh, up there where my bee yard is i have a lot of it uh, it is a heavy dark honey from what i understand like i said i've not been around it but we're going to find out now i'm still feeding my bees up there so i'm hoping that in a combination of the japanese knotweed nectar that they bring in and the the sugar syrup that i'm feeding them hopefully we'll get them girls uh, pretty good shape for the winter now my plan is to go up actually tomorrow and i'm going to put some boxes on top of those and let them start filling those mediums up uh, building some comb and uh, storing some sugar syrup for the winter. Uh, you know, another thing that I want to say about feeding is uh, something that we don't uh, think about a lot of times, or a lot of people don't. You know, they think, well, you just put some sugar syrup on them and they're okay, but we are in a dearth. We have some pollen coming in, but that's going to end pretty soon. You know, when this golden rod is starting to bloom, when this golden rod and this knotweed, when it goes away, uh, we're we're going to be done. We're going to be done until till spring. Uh, so really, another thing that's very important, uh, I think, is just as important as sugar syrup, is pollen. And uh, I use uh, there's a million things out there, but I like to use the uh, the Ultra B. Um, you know, I buy it in these uh, these 10-pound cans. 
Ultra B, uh, you know, if you again, if you watch Bob Benny, he'll tell you it's not a pollen substitute. It is a pollen supplement, is what it is. Uh, there is nothing that was going to take the place of good fresh nectar, and there's absolutely nothing that's going to take the place of good fresh pollen. Uh, now the bees has got to have both. You know, we know that the, the sugar. Uh, the sucrose, that is carbs, is what that is. Uh, and we know that the, the pollen uh, sub that we use, it is a protein. Uh, bees need both of those. They need uh, good nutrition uh, to rear brood. They need good nutrition to get them through the winter. You know, uh, one way to tell if you have good nutrition in a hive is, is when you're doing your inspection. Uh, when you pull that frame of, of open brood and larva out of there, you want to look, pay attention to that larva, that young larva down in those cells. Is it swimming in a little pool of, you know, milky looking royal jelly? Uh, when you see that, you know you have good nutrition. If you don't see that, then you probably need to start doing something. Uh, that is the key to a, a really healthy hive. Is, is good nutrition. Now, uh, the pollen uh, that I use at Ultra B, uh, I build a little feeder and I hang it and it, it's nothing fancy. You've seen it on here a million times. It is nothing more than a piece of four inch uh, green PVC with a four inch cap on it. And then I buy one of these. It's a, uh, it's a gutter downspout as well. I don't actually glue it together. I just stick them on pull this off and put my pollen sub in there. Uh, I'll get me two little eye bolts put on here and then I'll, I'll put a wire and I'll take it and I'll hang it on a tree or something fairly close to the hives. And let me tell you something guys, uh, if there's pollen coming in and we seen there the other day, I don't know if you could tell, but I had some real orange looking pollen that was coming in. They won't touch that. Uh, this thing's been hanging here on my fence for quite a while, uh, they don't touch it. If there's pollen, there's no substitute, man. They're, they're gonna go, they're gonna get that pollen. But if you would hang one of those, and uh, you'll see in the fall, and on the winter days, you know, I'm lucky here. Uh, the winters that we have, we have some bad winters. But we have still some good days as well. It's 50 plus degrees, and that lets the bees get out, fly a little bit, do cleansing flights. Uh, they will hit this pollen really hard. Uh, they need that. Like I said, it's protein for those bees. And then also the Ultra Bee, and we'll get into that this spring, I make pollen patties with that. And then when the red maple starts to bloom, uh, I'll stick a pollen patty on those hives, and that really spurs up the brood rearing. It really kicks them into high gear. So the, uh, the Ultra Bee is some good stuff. Uh, it's not cheap, I'll be honest with you. It's not cheap, but it's well worth it. Uh, but if you'll see, you know, in a winter day, man, they they are wearing it out for sure when there's nothing coming in. So uh, I wanted to touch on that today. You know, uh, to me, feeding your bees and treating your bees probably two of the most important things that we can do. Uh, like I said, you know, we want to take care of the bees that we have. We want to do everything that we can to make sure they survive the winter, uh, make sure they're ready for the spring, get them ready to, uh, to make us some honey. I mean, let's be honest, guys, I don't know about you, but that's, that's what I'm here for. I, I like honey, and uh, I like to, to get my bees to make honey and eat honey, and I like to give honey away and sell honey. That's what I like to do. That's why we do what we do. So it's very important to take care of those bees. Uh, if you're treatment free, like I said, guys, I, I hope, you know, and, and feed free, I hope that works out for you. I do. And I'm not, I'm not getting on here bashing anybody. You know, everybody's welcome to do what they want. No problem. But, uh, you know, if you're just getting started, think about feeding your bees and treating your bees. Very important. Uh, it really, really is. Now, I will say this, you know, uh, I said there earlier, uh, when I'm feeding this time of year, I'll go a little less than, than a one-to-one. -one. I'll put about four pounds of sugar into about five pounds of water. 
and I mix that up. When you do that, that'll give you right at a gallon jug full of feed. Uh, the bees, it, it seems like they really like that mixture. Uh, they will really build some calm when you do that. And then when that calm builds, they'll start storing that. And they seem to really do well on that mixture. Now, as time goes on, uh, here where I'm at in, in West Virginia, um, I will feed these bees pretty good up to about mid-October, depending on the weather. Uh, now, that last couple weeks, from like the 1st of October through the mid-October, I will start thickening that up a little bit. I will go, you know, one to one, and I'll go to like one and a half to one. I don't really do two to one. I have done it before, but man, that's pretty thick. Uh, kind of makes a mess. But I, I do. I like to go about one and a half to one, and then I pull it all off about the middle of October, and then uh, I'll let them give them a few weeks to, to to cap that, do what they need to do with it. And then I'll go in one final time there, about the first part of November, and I will get my hives ready for winter. And I also use sugar in the winter. We're going to get into that. I'll have some videos on I do the, the mountain camp method. Uh, it seems to work really well for right here where I'm at. So, and then that basically that is it. I mean, that's it until spring. Uh, I'll get in, you know, maybe one time through the winter, just peep in there to make sure that they still have sugar on top. And then I'll go uh, button them back up, and then we're good till I put a pollen patty on about February, end of February into March. So that's about it, guys. I know not a very interesting thing, but it's something to think about. Uh, you know, there's a lot of little things in beekeeping. There really is, and it's something we need to think about. Uh, to me, I mean, I, I, I'm going to feed them, and I'm going to give them every chance that I possibly can to not only survive, but I want them to thrive. You know, if they thrive, then that's more honey for us. Now, one thing that I do, and, and you know, I've done it here, this is say, I will pull most of my honey off, I do. And uh, I'll pull that off the hive and I'll feed them sugar syrup and I'll let them store that. It, it seems to do really well for them. The bees like it. It's not as heavy and not as thick, you know. That's another thing I wanna point out, you know, like I said, here where I'm at, these bees, they can get out in the winter. They may be in the hive for, you know, a few weeks, some severe cold weather, but you're gonna have some days, it's 50, 60 degrees, they can get out and they can fly. Now, when you get further north, uh, you get in places, you know, up Minnesota, and you get in Michigan and places like that, these bees might be in that in that hive for, for months, you know, and uh, bees are very, they're very clean animals. They're not going to go to the bathroom inside the, the hive. Uh, they're going to sit there and they're going to hold that. So the way that I think, I don't know if I'm right, but the way I think, you know, uh, have you ever just uh, went somewhere and you eat so much so heavy stuff till absolutely you just, you couldn't function, man. You, I, I'm bad about that. As you can tell, I'm bad about that. So uh, a bee's the same way, you know, uh, I think this sugar syrup's good for them, guys. It's not as heavy, not as hard on them as that honey. Uh, yeah, they like honey, but they like the, the nectar and the sugar syrup just as well. Uh, I think it's easier on your bees, and I think it's better for their health. I really do. Uh, that's just my opinion, you know, so I, I'm not sure. I don't have anything to back that up, but I know how that we feel when we eat too heavy and too hard. We're miserable, and you know, these bees, these winter bees, they're a little different from these summer bees. These summer bees, they're out flying, burning off uh, calories. Uh, you know, they're fine. They just they fly till they die. Those winter bees, you know, they're a little bigger. They've got a little different metabolism. Their whole job, keep that old gal warm, you know, and keep that colony alive. That's their, that's their whole job for the whole winter. And then they die. So. Uh, not much of a life when you think about it, so we need to make them as comfortable as we can. So, I don't know, maybe you got something out of this, I don't know, hopefully you did. Uh, next week we're going to start getting back into the bees, I want to get back in and check them. I'm actually going to go up tomorrow, um, get home tonight, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, I've got a, uh, 
little swarm trap set up out here behind me. Uh, I'm gonna transfer those, that colony that's behind me over into that. And I'm gonna move them in the morning if I can. Uh, move them up to the other yard uh, where my, my other bees are at. Like I said, we'll have everything in one location, which is good and bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that and, and get them ready and uh, we'll see what happens. And I'm gonna put the feed right back on them. So we'll see how they do. So guys, I hope maybe I've said something to help somebody shed a little light on the subject. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to send me a comment. Uh, ask, I don't care if I don't know, we'll find the answer. You know, uh, know a lot of people and we'll, we'll see what we can find out for you. So uh, think about feeding your bees and uh, taking care of your bees because that's uh, very important. So until next time, I'll say, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here with us. All those that, uh, that gives me the likes and the, has subscribed to the channel, I appreciate that, I really do. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me, it does. So, uh, guys, I hope you're well. I hope your family's well. And I hope you have a good week. I hope everything goes good for you. I hope everything goes good for your bees. So, until next time, this is Tim, the Boone County Beekeeper. God bless you, and thanks for stopping by.